So last time we started talking about games with communication and what I wanted to what I want to do is eventually go move to a, a, a very general model of games with communication. But before uh, before I do that, let's just recollect uh, two types of issues that we were talk uh, that um, that we were uh, that we had to discuss. And in the previous class, we discussed one of them, and that was called the issue of moral hazard. A moral hazard was essentially referred to the situation where uh, you had two players. There is a principal who is like a manager or firm owner or some someone like that, and then there was there is the agent who was the worker, and the the manager wanted to get work done uh, from the worker, so he basically wanted to uh, delegate a task to the worker. Okay, now and the situation that we saw was that uh, the the problem for the manager was to come up with a contract. Uh, that would make the uh, a, that would make the worker work for him but the situation that we saw was the the worker or the agent need not in general need not uh, choose an action that is aligned with the interests of the manager right so this is essentially the issue of moral hazard so i'll just quickly uh, go over it again so in the simplest case let's suppose there is uh, there is an output x that the manager is interested in and this output x is a function of the uh, function of two things it is a sum of two things the effort a which is made by the agent and epsilon which is noise right so the uh, so the actual output depends on both on the effort of the agent and you know what we call, what i described last time as his as his luck and uh, what the the principal was interested in is, is he derived a utility from the output minus whatever he paid uh, to the agent and let's call that payment psi so what the int uh, principal was interested in doing was to come up with a uh, with a so this is a payment that he makes to the payment made by principal to the agent and what the principal wanted to do was come up with a with a payment so as to maximize this utility now this payment here the, impo uh, the uh, had some constraints so we could not uh, he could uh, the the there were some some basic constraints on the on the nature of communication between the agent and the principal so in particular what we had seen was that the principal cannot observe the actual action of the agent right what the principal can observe is only the output right so principal can only observe the output so this psi has to be a function of so we write it like this we write it sigma of x means that psi is a function of is a function of x all right there was also another constraint which if you remember was what we called the participation constraint participation constraint basically said that you cannot make a, uh, the payment to be such that uh, you, the agent goes into slavery you know a form of slavery so essentially the agent has the choice to not not take up uh, take up your job or leave your job if uh, if 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 the payment is is not good enough so the agent had what we what we described as a reservation utility let's call this ua and let's call this up the agent wanted to choose an action such that the expect he has the expected utility from his payment minus the cost of taking that action is maximized now you can uh, enforce a participation constraint in in the following way you can uh, you can ask that this when the agent acts optimally it is it is in his interest to be in the job so that we can ask that this is greater than or equal to u u bar a right so this is a reservation utility this on the what i have on the left this is the problem this is the optimization problem faced by the agent all right so then the full problem for the principal the principal's problem and let's call this value of this problem vp i'll just put a max here it is to maximize the expectation of 
u p of x minus psi or psi in sigma of x subject to the constraint that subject to the participation constraint and so this let me call this v a subject to v a greater than equal to u bar a all right. So, this is what the principle had to solve for. So, the, uh, and uh, the, the psi that you get from here is his is the optimal contract. So, you get psi as a function of x the function defines the contract ok psi you get as a function x now the reason why moral hazard one way of capturing what moral hazard uh, is all about is actually this issue so you can uh, write out another problem for the principle now here what is happening is a is being chosen by by the agent to maximize this here and what the only thing that the principle cares about is that va should be greater than equal to so a is being chosen to uh, chosen in this way and the only thing that the principle cares about here is V a being greater than equal to u, uh, u bar a right. Now, you can pose another type of problem in which, so here what is happening is that the agent is choosing this ok, is choosing this particular uh, is choosing this uh, choosing this a in order uh, uh, in order to maximize his utility and this is greater than and it uh, it is turning out that and and the only thing that the principal is asking is that this is that the participation constraint is met right now what the principal could instead do is not worry about maximizing this utility at all so here's a hypothetical other way by which the principal can think what is ideally in his interest he doesn't care about maximizing his utility he just says well i uh, I enforce it in the following way there should be some action for which some choice for the agent for by which he remains in the job and then amongst those actions or amongst those uh, things that the agent chooses actions that the agents choose I am going to choose the action that that is most beneficial to me all right. So, this becomes the another problem which you can let us call this BPFB and I will tell you what this FB stands for. This is this problem. You maximize over psi and A the utility of A that the agent that the principal would get subject to the requirement subject to only the participation constraint being satisfied. Now, you see what is happening here, here the principle is basically saying I am going to choose a payment and I am also going to choose what you are going to do. So long as you do not leave your job, so long as your, your participation constraint is still satisfied, right? I am going to give you a payment and I am also going to tell you what to do, essentially micromanage exactly what you are going to do, so long as you do not leave your job and I am going to choose them in such a way that it maximizes my utility. right? Now, this obviously is actually it turns out that this is better for the agent uh, for the principal ok this particular thing, but this is not implementable by the agent because this would require the agent to actually do go uh, sorry this is not implementable by the principal ok. So, the V p uh, so you will always find that V p this is is greater than equal to V p V p itself. We, this is the value that the principal got by delegating. This is the value that he gets by micromanaging. So, what was FB? I will tell you what FB stands for. So, FB is, is a term that is used uh, uh, you know in, man, in management terms and so on. It is what is called the first best and VP is what is called the second best. First best is basically if you insta instead of delegating, if you yourself went and did the job then what would you then what is what would you get you would get VPFB all right and uh, without delegation what uh, we, uh, and sorry with delegation what you get is VP and the, this there is always this inequality and this gap between the two 
when there is a gap between the two we say that there is moral, moral hazard essentially there is there is a a difference between the principal doing the agent's job himself or basically choosing what the agent should be doing and between him delegating and the reason there is a gap between the two is because once the contract is fixed there is nothing binding the agent to actually acting optimally in you know you know nothing binding the agent to solve this vpfb problem he is basically going to solve maximize his own utility all right so the gap between these two is what also has a name it is this minus this is also what is called the information rent now this is even more stark when a when you have a so here remember there is there is noise also here in the output now this will be even more stark when the noise happens during game play and is observable by the agent but not the principal so a, the agent can basically uh, you know can if 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 uh, you know essentially based on how, how the noise evolves he can actually make suboptimal efforts so suppose for example if you know if the agent is a worker who works in a farm the uh, the principal is the is the owner of the farm if he gets a good if, if there is good rainfall for example if his luck is good he the worker doesn't need to put in as much effort right and he can essentially enjoy the outputs uh, enjoy his payment as a result of luck rather than as a result of his effort okay so so whereas on the other hand had he put in even more effort then he could have you know that would have been better even even more better for the uh, for the farm owner but he doesn't do that right so this is this 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 moral hazard problem basically is an issue that arises during gameplay where once after the contract is signed there is nothing that you can do to enforce a particular action because and the reason for that is because the contract is a function of the output rather than the action itself and the action is unobservable all right so at the at, a, at its core no so i'll use this term and the reason for using this term will become clearer at its core moral hazard is the issue that relates to obedience the principal wants the agent to do something but the agent it may not be in the agent's interest to do that thing okay to so principal can instruct the agent to go and solve vpfp but it is not the in the agent's interest to solve vpfp okay he instead solves something else so to obey that the obedience of instructions is where the issue is all right now i'll 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 explain where the reason i brought this term up there is another type of phenomenon that comes up uh, which i will discuss now and and then we what we will do is we'll work towards sort of understanding this in a more general more system theoretic sort of way so the the moral hazard as i said is an issue that comes up during gameplay because of the uh, unobservability of certain things from the principal now you there can be another type of issue altogether which is what is called adverse selection Okay, and this you will hear this term a lot, you know, if in the context of insurance and uh, uh, and many other many other type of uh, uh, interactions where risk is uh, where risk is involved. Okay, now what is ad adverse selection referring to? Adverse selection the in in adverse selection the question is not about um, observe observing the action and actions not being observable and so on. but rather the capability of the agent being not being known okay so here in in the in moral hazard the issue was that there is there is this uh, that you you cannot observe actions and there is noise and all that and so therefore there is a there is an imperfect information adverse selection refers to an incomplete information setting so you do not know what type of agent you are dealing with all right so for instance let's say for example there are two types of agents efficient and inefficient so the inefficient agent uh, for him it costs him uh, the cost if he has to produce a certain output q cost of output q is theta upper bar of q that's if he is inefficient and if he is efficient then the cost of output q 
is theta under bar of q and so and theta bar upper bar is greater than theta under bar ok. So, this is the, the efficient guy it costs him less to produce the same output q alright. Now, the principle has to interact with this guy, but the type of the agent is known only to the agent the principle does not know whether he is the efficient guy or the he is an inefficient guy alright. So, now what what is the way to then design a contract given that you do not know which type of agent you are dealing with right. So, it turns out in this case that an incentive has to be offered in order to get a person to reveal his type ok. So, the 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 that 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 there is the issue here is that there is a private information known that is exists even before the game begins. There is this private incomplete information type of setting where there is a private type known to the agent ok be even before the game which has evolved even before the gameplay begins and you have to offer an incentive in order to and you have to offer an incentive in order to differentiate between the types. So, this this here means that essentially some uh, there is a cost to actually discovering the type of the agent itself on the part of the principle. So, one one mechanism that does this I will just tell you uh, uh, roughly what what the principle could do is how does he what does he mean to uh, to to offer offer two different this thing what the principle could do is he could say well if you produce an output when uh, the when the agent when the agents maximize their own individual utilities they produce output produce outputs q upper bar and q q lower bar ok. So, q lower bar is the output that is produced by the efficient guy alright and q, uh, q upper bar is the output that is produced by the inefficient guy alright. So, in other words if the if the efficient guy was employed then the output that you would get is q and lower bar if the uh, inefficient guy was employed then you will get the output q upper bar right. But you do not know which is the efficient guy and which is the inefficient guy. So, now how does the how does the uh, principal uh, uh, then delegate a task like this knowing that you do not given that he does not know who the efficient one and who the inefficient one is. So, he has to make a differential payment. So, what he do does is he offers a menu of contracts not one contract, but a menu of contracts and this is one way of doing it ok. There are the more general framework I will tell you later. So, the menu of contracts where he says if you produce an output T Q Q under bar then you will be given a payment if you produce an output q up under bar you will be given a payment p under bar and if you if you produce an output q upper bar you will be given a payment p upper bar all right now you have a one more variable here p upper bar and now p up p p upper bar and p lower bar now using these variables you have to ensure that the contract is the menu is such that it picks the right person all right so first you need to ensure that some you get someone to do the job so, you need a participation constraint so the participation constraint basically says that participation constraint we essentially just says that both players find it worthwhile to actually do the job. So, this is what they get paid this is what the cost they incur all right they find it worthwhile to pay uh, to do the job all right. Now, in addition to this you want to pick the right one this just ensures that none of them will leave the job right. If if you want if in addition to this you want to ensure that they you pick the right the, the right incentive goes to the right person all right. So, the one what you the way you enforce that is to enforce the following constraint this is the payment that the this is the profit or uh, utility that the inefficient guy would get. Now, suppose this guy instead go 
this is the inefficient guy this is what he would get from the contract designed for the inefficient guy now suppose this inefficient guy instead chooses the contract designed for the efficient guy what would he get he would get payment p lower bar he would still incur a cost theta upper bar so he basically i am he the, the principal is saying i am going to buy an output quantity q under bar from you at a rate p under bar but the, this guy will now incur a cost theta upper bar times q under bar so what what this means is essentially this guy is uh, the wh what is this uh, is inequality saying the inefficient guy is better off choosing the inefficient contract than switching to the efficient contract okay and likewise i can impose the other requirement the efficient guy is also better off choosing the efficient contract than the inefficient contract okay now what does this mean essentially the way you can think about this is the following you can if the p p bars and q bars are chosen in such a way that these inequalities hold then i can do the then the principal can do the following the principal can simply go and ask the agents what is your type are you efficient or inefficient okay the so what the principal does is he presents them this menu of contracts and then simply goes and asks them okay what is your type are you efficient or inefficient and it because these the the p's and q's are chosen in this so so that so, so that these inequalities hold a both of them will take the job and b they will choose that contract which is appropriate for them because it is it is in their interest to stick to their true the true the contract that refer that is pertaining to their true type okay so these constraints are what are called incentive compatibility constraints compatibility now incentive compatibility basically refers to the to this kind of uh, the, in this case it refers to the following setting that it is in an agent's interest to reveal his true type okay now this appears very broadly in many different games okay uh, especially in particularly in um, in uh, in games that involve security and so on you remember i had when i told you incomplete information the example i gave you was you are securing an airport and you don't know whether you are uh, whether the passenger who is coming in he is a whether he is a terrorist or an innocent passenger or or a drug peddler and you wanted to distinguish between the two now what you are going to do after that matters the scheme that the, the scheme that you are going to use to act on each of these categories should be such that it that it actually incentivizes the person to reveal his true type at least the the innocent guy should be incentivized to reveal to say that he is innocent and the 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 uh, the others should not should have no incentive to say that they are innocent all right so so this is this is basically a framework for you know what should be the for some kind of graded penalties graded uh, graded uh, procedures and so on so that then that that ensures that you know the right type people get the, that the when you do not have uh, complete information essentially the 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 it becomes it's in the incentive of the uh, of the person with the information to reveal his true type and then the, the then essentially the incomplete information disappears and the game moves uh, becomes one where you have complete information from there on all right so th this also comes up in auction design for example you want people to uh, to uh, you want the object to go to the person who values it the most right but nobody wants to reveal how much they value because if they, if they reveal their true value they uh, they will end up paying also a lot more right so people want to uh, undercoat their value at the same time but at the same time they also want to get the uh, get the true, uh, get the item as well you put these two together it turns out how to design an auction becomes a question in itself right so that the true uh, you know the truth actually comes out what do you mean how to design what are the parameters, parameters are who wins and how much does he pay it is a design parameter what is the rule by which you decide the winner and how much does he pay which is the other thing okay so the rule is usually trivial the highest bidder wins 
but how much does he pay is a very important question. And this, this for, for the longest time, you know, mankind actually conducted auctions by saying who, how, by what method? You ask people to, okay, how much do you want to pay? And then whatever they quote, you charge them that, right? If I say that this, uh, you know, this pen is worth whatever, someone quotes 100 rupees for it, you'll, I will say, you know, you take, okay, then pay 100. It turned out that that mechanism is not incentive compatible. There is a problem with that mechanism. The correct mechanism, which is which preserves incentive incentive compatibility and makes people reveal their true type, is do you know what that is? No. Each person pays the the winner pays the second highest bid, not the highest. This is what is called the Vikri auction. So, it, in fact, so in this case, it is a dominant in Vikri auction where you pay the player pays his second highest. The the winner is the one who pay, bids highest, but the price he pays is equal to the is equal to the second highest bid, not the highest bid. Maybe it's not his own bid; it's the second highest bid. And it turns out in this case, it's a dominant strategy to reveal your own true true valuation. And so, so Vikri got her actually, it is just incredibly elegant how this whole thing works out. That the, it was this beautiful insight that actually you should be charging, you have to take away this difference between the first and second. And then, then everything falls in place. So, Vikri got a Nobel Prize actually for that and today eBay and all of these things run on, on, on Vikri's auctions. In fact, our, you know, the recently concluded 5G auctions are also one form of Vikri auctions. So, essentially what we, uh, two issues that we found were, one is this, what happens during gameplay about obedience to a contract, to, uh, obedience to whatever the principal is saying. The other is, for, in order to, for the principal to tell you what to do, he needs to know what, who you are, whether you are efficient or inefficient and so on. Okay. And that is, so this is about revealing, revelation of types. Okay. So these, so these two things we can put together into a one beautiful elegant framework which involves communication, in which you know, in, in which we are allowing for communication of various kinds between players. Okay. So this is, that's what I will, I will talk about, uh, talk about now and to, till the end of the course that's what I want to focus on.